Hi, I'm Steve Adubato, a very compelling interview with um, a state legislator who always speaks his mind. He is uh, State Senator Mike Darty from the 23rd District. Great to have you with us, Senator. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Let's do this. We're taping on the 17th of November. It'll be seen after that, and including it to 2021. Do you believe, right out of the box, as a significant, strong Donald Trump supporter, that Joe Biden won the presidency, not just in the Electoral College and in the popular vote, fair and square? Well, I think we definitely have some election integrity issues here in the United States. We're seeing a lot of problems all around the uh, country. We saw what happened in Philadelphia. You know, the idea that uh, a governor in violation of the U.S. Constitution can rewrite the election laws and ignore orders from the U.S. Supreme Court, Justice Alito, uh, what we saw where no partisan observers were allowed whatsoever. I mean, where in America can an election be held where you put the partisan observers in a quarantined area, uh, you, you lock them out, you intimidate them. We saw that in Philadelphia, in Detroit. Now, these are not free and fair elections, uh, in my opinion. And if you have nothing to hide, why are you not allowing partisan observers to take a look at what's going on? This is a you real know what, problem. Senator, so many of your Republican colleagues have been saying as we do this program, um, Mr. President, it's time to step aside and help the transition. That's what presidents do. That's what President Obama did for President Trump, even though he didn't vote for him, didn't like him, didn't like his policies. Isn't there something to be said for the future of democracy, representative democracy, in helping the transition along? Well, what ha let's look at what happened in 2000, where Al Gore contested the election for 37 days. It went to the U.S. Supreme Court twice. He didn't concede. So we're, you know, this is a presidential election. It's very important. There's been a number of issues. There are over 400 affidavits, folks that worked at the election polls that said there's problems here. We have somebody from Dominion Software who said that in an affidavit, she can go to jail for this. In Michigan, she said they were running the same ballots through the scanning machine over and over and over again. So you know, you know, there, Senator, are, what's there interesting, are problems. That you are know what's interesting, Senator, is I am sure you have a ton. You're a very good lawyer and a very good communicator. I'm sure you have a ton of anecdotal incidents and examples. But here's the question. You're a greatly respected member of the legislature, a public official. There are people watching this in January, February into 2021 who are now questioning, because of what you are saying, whether Joe Biden is a legitimate president. Is that the objective that you have right now? Well, let's, let's just take a look at what happened when Donald Trump was elected in 2016. We had, uh, we had, from day one, we had resistance. We had the FBI setting up General Flynn. We had immediately the, the Russia hoax and the investigation with Robert Mueller. We had the impeachment based upon a phone call to Ukraine. No one questioned so whether Trump, he was legitimately Donald elected was president never, of the United States. But Don no one, no one, including in the media, questioned whether Donald Trump, in spite of losing the popular vote by several million votes, he won the Electoral College. He got the same number of electoral votes as Joe Biden did this time. No one questioned it. Legitimate what you're saying, but the questioning of who wins is a different question of how you interact with that president, is it not? Well, right now we're following the legal process. We're following the Constitution. And uh, some of the close elections, there's a right for candidates to take a look. And that's what's going on. So I'm for sure. Well, hey. Uh, Al Gore had 37 days in 2000, so we're, we're, in a we're not even halfway. For how long? We're not in even this halfway. global pandemic. For how long do you and many others question whether Joe Biden needs to get the mechanics and the operation of government, the presidency, in a global pandemic functioning? Well, I think when the when the pro, we're Georgia, we're going to have resolution this week, right? And so I think when we go through some of these states and we see. And if the election results are confirmed and verified, then I think at that point, uh, folks who support Trump will be saying, hey, that's uh, Biden won the election. That's fair. Thank you, Senator. I appreciate that. You know, you said something interesting. We do a series called Confronting Racism. The graphic will be up on the screen as we're speaking. And you've said this about systemic racism. Um, the United States does not have systemic racism. It is an evil lie. We must have the courage to oppose this wicked, baseless, baseless allegation. Go ahead, please. Sure. Well, in my experience, I've been in all walks of life. I've been in the military. 
And thank I've you been, for your service, Senator. Uh, well, hey, it was my it was my honor. I've been in politics. I've been in uh, big business meetings, and all I've seen in all of my experiences is people wanting to do the right thing, to pick the best person for the job. And I have never, ever seen anybody say or do anything to disadvantage somebody based upon their sex or their race. I have never seen it. Now, there may be bad people out there. There may be people that do bad things. But the system in the United States is set up to be fair to everybody. And that's been my experience. And I felt it was important to say that at that time. This is a country, a majority white country, that elected Barack Obama president twice. Now, if we had a systemically racist country, a man who grew up with, you know, not even having his father around most of the time to become president of the United States and be elected and reelected by a majority of a country that's majority white, how can there be systemic racism? So well, this, an, is a, I, I mean, this is an evil lie that's been perpetrated. The system well, is not, there's bad people, but the system sure. is not systemically racist. Sure. So when you saw George Floyd for those eight and a half minutes with the knee on his neck from a high ranking official in that police department and several other police officers watching, how many times have you seen that with someone who's white or non black? With Brianna Taylor, we can go through the litany. Are you saying that those are just incidents and there's no pattern? I, I, like I said, I think there's some bad actors, but if you actually look at, and I know we don't really how have many the first bad acts institute, how many bad acts in your mind, how many times someone who's black and brown at the hands of police who we have great respect for, let's not talk about defunding the police, not the issue, but you do not see that systemically or consistently with those people who happen to be white, like you and I. And so you're saying that's all just a bunch of incidents, isolated. Well, actually, if you take a look at the real numbers of who's shot by police, there's actually a lot more white people shot in America and killed by police than there are African Americans. There are a lot also more white this, people Steve. in the country than black people, but disproportionately, Steve, Steve, you know, this. you know that black and brown people are more victims on the other end of this kind of racism than whites. You know that, right? Steve, who runs these cities? Who runs these police departments? And so there's got, you know, if you're saying there's a problem, then maybe there's a if problem. I'm with saying the there's a problem. You, you actually do not think that people who are black and brown, who have COVID at a disproportionate rate, who are hospitalized at a disproportionate rate, who die at a disproportionate rate just by chance. For a country like the United States, where you have people coming from all over the world, different races, different religions, there's no country that's fairer. Now, of course, you're going to have some problems every once in a while. There's no country that's fair and provides more opportunity. That's why people continue from all over the world to want to come to the United States and live the American dream. What gives you reason for optimism as we move forward, Senator, in these very polarized, divided times? Well, I, I, don't, know, I don't know that there's a lot that gives me optimism. I see a very divided country. And as a matter of fact— How do we come together? I, uh— I don't know that we're coming together, frankly. Do you I want think us to that, come together? Excuse me? Do you want us to come together and compromise? I, I, would like, I would like the country to come together, but around what principle? Around the principle of justice, around the principle of treating people equally, around the principle of solving the COVID problem, just for a start. Okay. So I think Donald Trump, a lot of the issues Donald Trump talked about as president, also Bernie Sanders talked about those as well. I mean, we have... We have corruption everywhere in the United States. I mean, just look at uh, the idea of flash trading, where the folks on Wall Street, they can find out you, Steve, if you're buying or selling your stock, and they can jump ahead of you, and they can do this millions of times a day to basically fleece money from American citizens that are trying to save a little for their retirement. This, so this is something, so the country, yeah, we can rally around that. Let's stop the criminals on Wall Street from ripping us off, okay? And I would okay. work with Bernie Sanders to make that happen. But you that's know what? Fair. That, so, see, that Senator, almost, there is reason for optimism. Well, that's that's what Donald Trump was all about. That the it was, it, Let me ask you this before I let you go. Do you believe Donald Trump's public communication, prim, primarily over Twitter, the name-calling, the mocking of people, including reporters with a disability, are you saying that you really believe that that helped bring the country together for four years, the calling people names, the mocking and the demonizing of people? 
the enemy, we're the enemy of the people in the media, that brought us together? It's not the way I would have done it, but it, no, not issues, at all. You're a perfect gentleman. The issues that he brought up, the endless foreign wars. I mean, that let's that That's was fair. The, I supported him on the issues. He wasn't the perfect vehicle, but the issues of the selling out to China, sending our jobs overseas, right? The American worker, average American worker, making thirty thousand dollars or less. The endless foreign wars, killing our young men and women for what? Donald Trump stood for all that. And the greatest thing he didn't do is he didn't start any more stupid foreign wars, right? So <laughs> yeah. Donald Trump should get a pat but on the on back the for that. Senator, before I let you go, you've, oh, I've said this every time you join us, whether in studio or remotely, you are a class act. You always conduct yourself. You never call people names. You conduct yourself with dignity and integrity. Do you believe the president, the outgoing president as we speak, that his rhetoric, his tone, his demeanor has been helpful to bringing people together? Well, I wouldn't have done it that way. I think once you're president, okay. you don't need to use a sledgehammer to communicate. People are going to listen to you when you start talking because you're president. Yeah. Well, people listen to you, Senator, and I can't thank you enough for joining us and representing a point of view that a lot of people have, whether they agree or not. Thank you so much, Senator. Best to you and your family. Thank you, Steve. We'll be right back after this. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by Holy Name Medical Center, MD Advantage Insurance Company, the New Jersey Economic Development Authority, Valley Bank, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, Operating Engineers, Local 825, Fedway Associates, Inc., IBEW Local 102, Eastern Atlantic States Regional Council of Carpenters, and by these public-spirited organizations, individuals, and associations committed to informing New Jersey citizens about the important issues facing the Garden State, and by Employers Association of New Jersey. Promotional support provided by NJ.com and by Insider NJ. Data shows that many patients have avoided seeking critical health care in the wake of COVID-19 for fear of contracting the virus. Delaying medical care can have serious consequences, so you should never second guess or ignore your symptoms. At Holy Name Medical Center, we have measures in place to prevent infectious disease from spreading. We're clean, we're open, and we're safe for all your healthcare needs.